May you speak in the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Here we are at last, Christmas Eve. Not quite on the dawn of the new year, but still acutely aware of the passing of another year. What are you feeling tonight? What are you feeling right now? Are you in the right frame of mind to be still and know that the child born of Mary in God is God incarnate and he came for you? Or are you a little bit worked up inside thinking about preparations still to be made? Whatever you're feeling, don't feel bad about it. Countless others are feeling that way too. Even some of the people we encounter in the Christmas story. Something in us wants desperately to feel the peace that passes all understanding, especially tonight. We hear the angels sing about peace on earth, but maybe we're not feeling it. Don't feel bad. The central characters in our nativity story, well, they weren't feeling much peace either. When we come to the manger, we want to come on a skip. In the bleak midwinter, the line goes that we've just been singing, what can I bring him, poor that I am? Bring my heart. And we want to bring an honest heart. So let's look at some of the participants in our Christmas story. The angels, proclaiming good news of great joy for all people. Well, speaking of news, it's hard, isn't it, in this day and age, to find good news, isn't it? The news gets more and more disturbing every time that I listen to it. For many people in our world today, good news, great joy, is in short supply. Again, on the one hand, it's wonderful hearing the story of God's intervention in human history. But what about right now in Ukraine, Syria, Pakistan, or goodness, just about anywhere in the world? You can't say that's not in your mind because it's one of the subjects you requested in your sermon series. So we can bring that to the manger. So yes, on the one hand, I, I want to go now to Bethlehem with the shepherds and see this thing that has taken place. I want to find the baby lying in the manger and be reminded once again that it is all true. But it's hard when all the roads seem to run parallel with tragedy in our own lives and throughout our world. So what am I bringing to the nature tonight? Am I bringing my sadness and concern and fear for the world? Thinking of all those who are suffering this night, and of course thinking about the young people who will inherit it in the next and the next generations. And I bring a deep desire to live the peace the joy, the promises. I bring my inadequacy, being in the world and of it, more often than not. And I don't think I'm alone in this. I think we all bring all sorts of stuff with us tonight. And whatever that might be, well, it's not because we don't believe the Christmas story. It's because we take it so seriously. The very essence of the story, the very fact of a God that cares enough to come into our messy world, well, it makes us want more. We want him to come in with fire and brimstone and sort it all out, don't we? But the manger tells a different story. Yes, of course, we sanitize it, don't we, in our nativity. So, in recent years, we've been more realistic and seen more realistic depictions of the, the hostility in the community where Mary and Joseph lived and the lack of care and hospitality for the young pregnant woman and the insanitary conditions of the birth and the dangers of the evil that was all around. The grief of the parents of the innocent ones slaughtered by Herod. Maybe not so different from our world after 
girl. Have you been in Belfast lately and seen the way some people are having to live? Maybe through no fault of their own. No place else to go but the streets. It's a heartbreaking tragedy to walk the streets of Belfast in the daytime. Never mind the night. Every other doorway filled with sleeping bags, plastic bags worn in all worldly possessions. Yes, tonight we bring our questions, our inadequacies, our own deep desires to make the world a better place. We bring our grief and our sorrow for broken lives and war torn lands, and we bring our fears for the future. Not such a different world after all. It's not so hard to make the connections between that night and now. And if we're honest, we see ourselves on both sides of the story. We've had visions of peace and we've also acted with fear and anger. We've sung praises and followed the star searching for something new, something beyond ourselves. We've also closed off the doors of our life and hung the no vacancy sign. We all bring something to that manger. All mankind throughout the ages has brought something, aspects of our own lives, ourselves and our world. We've been welcomed as the bringers of good news and we've also felt like an outcast. We've made plans for our future and we've grieved its loss. So you see, whatever way we look at it, Christmas is our story. We cannot come to the manger empty handed, to come with nothingness, to come just as a spectator looking at a, a pretty Christmas window display. Again. To bring our own stuff to the manger, we come as participants in Christ's birth. Spectators might see God's son, son born in Bethlehem, but, but participants will experience God's son born in themselves. And that's what we want this night, isn't it? For ourselves and for our world. To see God's son born in us. Meister Eckhart, who we often quote a 14th century monk, he said, What good is it that Christ was born in a stable in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago if he's not also born in us? Whatever it is we bring to the manger tonight is our means of participating in the divine birth. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in him tonight. I will be singing that later. So what are you bringing tonight? A little time of Bethlehem. That's for what we're going to sing. The hopes and fears are met in him tonight. What hopes and fears do you want met in him tonight? Just let's take a few minutes in the quietness of this night to bring our hopes and fears to the manger. Just close your eyes, bringing your hopes and fears to the manger. And also bringing our thanksgiving and our disappointments. Remembering the joys and the sorrows of this past year. Desires and longings have brought you here tonight. What are the things that might make you turn and run from God? Whatever it is you bring to the manger, let us speak the truth about your life. I don't know what you're bringing tonight, but I do know that Christ's manger is generous enough to take whatever we might bring. 
And I know that the Christ child is strong enough and powerful enough to change our lives and our world, even when we can't see it or don't believe it. That's why we're here, isn't it? That's why we come every year. So can this child's birth really change our lives? Well, think about this. Did the birth of your child change your world and recreate your world? Or did your birth change your parents' lives and recreate their world? Yes, isn't it? In more ways than we can count. And so it is with the birth of this child tonight. The promise of Christmas, and I so love the biblical promises, as you know, but as the Bible tells us, these words are trustworthy and true that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. To us is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and that is good news of great joy for all people in every town, in every place, and in every life. Isn't it a relief to have left your burdens down at the manger? And in a short while we traverse time from cradle this Christmas Eve to another Eve, the Eve of his death, as we participate at his behest, at his invitation, to remember the sacrifice he made to bring us to a new heaven and a new earth, into the joy of eternal life. So praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. God has come and made his home with us in the messiness of our lives and our world. Let us pray. Father, we come into the quiet place, away from the messiness of our world. We lay down this night at the manger, the things we will lay down at the foot of the cross. We thank you for this incredible gift you have given us, and we pray that we might go home this night changed, and being changed, be equipped to change the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, 